Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Good morning, teacher. Hello, teacher. Good morning. Good morning, teacher. Today, what I'd like to do, guys, is give you some time again to work on your performance task. I know this week we have both our performance task for Unit 2 due tomorrow, actually on Saturday. I'm going to give you an extra day to complete the performance task, and we're also working on our podcast. Okay, so today I want to give you some time to do that, and I want to really focus on how to narrow down your your topic and yesterday we started developing an outline we started thinking about how we can organize our ideas who's going to say what when and how but also think about the outline as helping you to to speak more specifically about a particular item now so i want to spend just a few minutes looking at an example or two and meet with uh, hopefully as many of you as possible this morning in class to discuss with you your progress, how you're developing your outline, and so on. So I really like, I'm looking at, I think this is group six's outline, and they have a really good start, and hopefully you can see my screen. I want to take a few minutes to show an example, show some, give some, some ideas, as you guys are comparing your own outline that you have, uh, let's take a look at what they have here. So they have an introduction. Now notice that the outline, they're using a combination of numbers and bullet points. All right, so that's that's fine. Okay, I, I'm not going to be, it, it doesn't matter if, to me if you're using bullet points, like all bullet points or all numbering systems or Roman numerals. It's up to you, but I would use Microsoft Word's, you know, built-in bullet points or, or numbering system here as you're developing your outline. So here we have an introduction. We have food, culture, and then a uh, famous, you know, famous person. Okay. Now, one of the hardest things to do your, your, your video is going to be between 15 and 20 minutes. One of the most difficult things to do in this type of performance is to try to speak more specifically about an idea, a person, concept. And so I really want to use the outline to help us write out and develop ideas more specifically. And we'll look at some examples here. Here in a minute but let me uh let me say a few things about an introduction so think of this cooking show um as you know something that you've seen probably before either on tv or uh, on the internet think of the introduction maybe as introducing the purpose of the show what what your if there's a, a underlying theme to the show, you can talk about that. You might even talk or provide some form of background information that relates to the overall theme of the cooking show. So think of the introduction as introducing and providing background information about the overall theme, right, of, of the cooking show. And also maybe the, the purpose, if you have a specific purpose of why you're creating the, the, the cooking show. Think of the target audience. This is very much related to the target audience. You know, your cooking show could be targeted to just about any group of people. But try to think of a specific group of people that will be your target audience. And that should be either implied or it should be explicit, that is something that you actually say in your introduction. I think that would be a good time to mention or make explicit or state implicitly the target audience. Is it for children? Is it for a specific uh, culture, a type of uh, group? You know, maybe you're bringing cultural awareness to another group of people. Okay, so, you know, your cooking show 
uh, if, for example, if you're doing a cooking show that is all about indigenous people in Mexico, the target audience is probably not the indigenous people from Mexico. It's probably another group of people that may be, may be unaware of uh, the indigenous groups of people from Mexico, right, as an example. So think of the introduction as stating the purpose, not necessarily talking about the specifics of the food you're going to mention, right? It could state generally the culture, but think of the food. I look at the food or the recipe as something very specific uh, throughout your discussion. It's a very specific thing when you're talking about the recipes and the ingredients and how to make it. Um, and to, to me, more the I think the culture aspect of it is a little bit more general. In fact, if I were looking at this food, culture, and, and the famous person, you know, maybe either the famous person or probably the famous person might be the best way to present the overall concept, right? And the culture would be part of this person's culture, right? And so just think of what you're going to talk about and think about the um, think about the underlying theme of your show. Now, I'm going to jump around a little bit here. We've got food, culture, and the famous, uh, famous people. So it looks like that the famous people, there are, there are uh, several people mentioned here. And here we have several aspects of culture. So my first feeling before we even get into the food, my first thought is, or maybe my first question is, is there a way to speak more deeply about less things? So instead of maybe three people, maybe we talk about one person in a specific aspect of culture that relates to that one person. And maybe that one person really enjoyed or appreciated or loved a certain type of food item. And that whole show could be about that one person and the culture of that person, both in terms of the, the, uh, maybe the idiot, well, maybe the the individual aspects of the person, but also maybe the cultural, the uh, maybe the cultural aspects of where this person is from. But maybe you can speak more specifically about one person and tie that one person into everything that you talk about. This is this is just a, as an example. Um, so, when you're using an outline. Think about going deeper into each aspect. Let's look at uh, clothing as an example. Um, what would be some subcategories that would relate to culture and clothing? Any ideas? Can you repeat the question, please, teacher? Yes. So what, what could be some specific aspects of culture and clothing that we could break down? Think about, ask yourself, what, what am I going to say about clothing and culture? And when you're asking yourself this question, think about the different areas, the different aspects of clothing that you could discuss. My question to you this morning is, can you think of some subcategories, some aspects of clothing that you could speak about. Colors and material. All right. So we could do color, either colors, we could either lump those together or we could separate those depending on, depending on what it is you would like to say about it. We'll put it together as one. Colors and materials. Okay. Any other uh, areas of clothing or aspects of clothing you could mention? If it is for a man or for a woman. All right. So...
All right, so maybe there's some traditional dress for for men. Maybe there's some for women, and then maybe there's some that uh, both men and women perhaps use. Okay, what else? Mm. The could be the history, for example, um, I don't know, um, Tarahumara's dress and how a way to dress and uh, Adelita's have another, I don't know if you understand me. All right, so history and then maybe the history could be broken down into different types. Mm -hmm. Or different uh, time periods. Maybe I should put time period. Time period one, time period two, and so on. Right. So maybe that would that could be a subcategory. Time period three. Okay. Good. Any other aspects of clothing that we could mention? We've got color materials. We have. Uh, Clothing for men, clothing for women, that could be another category. History, any other examples? Uh, clothing, clothing by, um, by country. Um, each country have has this uh, its way to um, to wear a clothes. All right, I'm going to mention region. Now it will depend. You mentioned country, and that's going to depend on uh, the overall topic. So remember that we're we're still trying to think in terms of our food and our famous person, right? If I'm in charge of culture and I'm thinking about clothing that I want to talk about. I'm at the same time, I'm discussing with my team members, I'm talking with Alondra and I'm saying, okay, what kind of recipe? Uh, and I, I know what kind of food we're gonna be talking about or the dish that we're gonna be talking about. And we know that uh, we're gonna be talking about a particular person. And so it probably would relate. Let's say that <clears throat> we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna talk about Zapata. Right, so maybe we talk about different regions where Zapata uh, resided or lived, if he, if he lived in different uh, states, right, in the south, maybe that there, uh, there's some different clothing perhaps, right, and, and maybe there's not, I don't know, but if I'm looking into uh, Zapata's history, you know, maybe uh, there's a regional difference Maybe there is a historical difference if we're looking at his life over the years, if there were any changes, right? Now, notice that I'm trying to tie this into, in this case, in this example, Zapata. Maybe I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, there really is no difference between uh, the historical aspect or regional aspect. Maybe there's not, you know, maybe what I'm thinking about here is difficult to tie into Zapata. Maybe I need to either change and think, maybe I can speak more about music, or maybe I can talk more about the reason in the rev for the revolution. And here I can list reason one, reason two, reason three, or however many reasons I want, but maybe that's all I'm going to talk about, the culture and the history of the revolution. Now, remember that the culture is, in this case, right, it's something that should be representative of, um, you know, maybe this is political. The culture is re very much politically related, right? So the politics of the culture and tying it into Zapata and maybe talking about maybe one of his favorite dishes and that would be part of 
this. But notice how I'm I'm going back and forth. And these are the kinds of discussions that you guys can have as a team as you're developing both individually and collectively. You're making these decisions, right? So in this case, Yaisha, she's not just making a decision by herself about culture and what she's going to talk about. She's going to continue talking with Alexia, right, and Alondra, and she's going to be deciding, okay, what can I talk about? But my first piece of advice for team for team six is to see if you can talk about less less things right it's you're automatically going to have a more interesting discussion a more interesting cooking show if you can speak more deeply about less things and remember that it all should tie in together and, you know, when you are preparing your outline or creating your outline, right, think about the order. Is, is it going to be, what's the, the most logical order? Should we talk about food first, then culture, and then the famous person? Or should we maybe introduce the person first, then talk about some cultural aspect, and then finish with the recipe? Or... Should we present the recipe throughout the entire presentation and then insert cultural aspects or talk about interesting facts about this person throughout the, the recipe? Right, these are just some examples that you can, think, you can think about. But in your outline, try to indicate, use, notice how I'm nesting right? I've got one level here. I've got another level here. I've got another level here under time period. And I could even go deeper depending on what, what it is I'm talking about. But try to use the outline to be more specific. Notice that this is a specific aspect. Time period is more specific than history. History is more specific than clothing. Clothing is more specific than culture. And that's the purpose of using an outline and using either bullet points or a numbering system so that you can very easily see, and again, not a lot of text, but key words and phrases that allow you to be more specific. We want to use an outline, guys, instead of a script. All right, so please avoid writing or creating a script. I... I would much rather you have a few mistakes here and there than say perfectly something that you wrote out beforehand. So I'm going to ask everyone to try to avoid writing out what you're going to say. Avoid creating a script. And I would try to use an outline of talking points. Consider these as talking points. And practice saying what it is that you want to say. A good outline is going to, it should prompt you to really include the key points of even the specific aspects that you want to say. If you look at this time period, you say, and you can prepare and you're going to know, okay, I'm going to talk about this, this, and this. And you can include this, 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 and this. And you can relate it back to other parts of the outline depending on how you're coordinating with your teammates, what, what it is that you want to say. You know, again, for me, the best type of cooking show is one that's conversational where you're going back and forth. It sounds very much like a conversation instead of just present, like mini presentations, instead of like a mini presentation on culture, a mini presentation about a famous person and a mini a presentation about a food recipe. It's more conversational as you guys are going back and forth and you could even ask each other questions about certain things, right? But try to keep that in mind. And today, this is what I want us to focus on with this outline. I want to show, share with you one example here. There, uh, there's going to be time for me to come in and uh, clarify any doubts that you guys have. So today is a good time for us to meet with your team and uh, clarify those doubts, but really focus on your outline. Uh, make sure that you have created a folder called week eight, if you haven't already, 
and make sure that you have created a Word document like group six has done here. Close this, All right? And they have a document called outline. Okay, so this is the idea. This is what we want to work on today. Again, continue working on our outline and uh, prepare. You can even begin practicing if you've uh, completed your outline. Practice, you know, practice the presentation. Don't just uh, record it the first time. Try it once, maybe twice, until your whole team is comfortable with delivering the cooking show, right? That you're comfortable about what it is you want to say, your transitions, and, and practicing if you're going to show some visuals, if you're going to share your screen, how that's going to be. It's going to take some practice, right? And so that's why I'm, I want to build into our class time uh, the time that you're going to need to do that. Okay, so let's, make, let's get the most out of our class by, by helping each other, working together, encouraging each other to speak in English, right? Try your best to encourage your teammates and be patient with yourself to try to explain what it is you want to do um, in English. And try it as best you can to, instead of writing out in the chat, right, try your best to, to communicate. And I know sometimes the internet might be an issue, and that's I understand that. But again, these sessions that we're doing, these classes that we're doing, where you guys are working together in teams, this is the opportunity for you to really practice the language with your classmates. Are there any questions, guys, about what we're working on today, about the outline, about your cooking show? No, the chain message. All right, so let's go ahead and break out into our teams. I would always record all of your meetings, all of these informal meetings, your discussions. And make sure, if you haven't already, to create your outline and uh, send me a chat, send me a message if you want me to look at something, and I'll, j I'll join in and we can discuss uh, what, you, what you've completed so far. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Uh, Jackie, I, if I just got a, a message from you. If you're trying to reach me, just jump into the chat here or... Uh, send me a message if we want to, if you want to chat in your team. Team uh, nine and team ten. Let me know if you have any questions about what we're doing today. We should all uh, you should all be in your meetings discussing your outline together. All right. Instead of doing it individually, you should be online in your online sessions and discussing together how to complete uh, the outline. Okay, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Okay, teacher, thanks. Yes, my father, as an additional bullet point, once you have chosen an organizational pattern separate into teams and draft an outline, we'll discuss the outline. Tortillas and... Is is uh, no is more more process, but I don't know what do you think about that. Yeah, I see. Yes, yes, I think you're saying the truth. It's easier, enchiladas. So, enchiladas. Okay. Yes. So. But first, I have to record myself cooking that and send it to the person who is going to record the outfit. And the other one has to pick uh, my audio. Okay. Hi, guys. I just wanted to pop in. Did you have any questions about uh, the performance task? Or the outline? Yes. Teacher, do you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, 
No sé por qué se escucha el eco. Bueno. Mm, we have to know if we want to know if we're going to uh, cook the soup of food. Uh, can you repeat that again, please? Uh, maybe speak a little bit closer to the microphone if you can. Um, but let me check. Uh, wait. Are you guys working on your outline? Maybe one of you can share your screen so you can all. Uh, or. We're like talking about where we to the food or we were, we were going to choose. We didn't do that document. Ah, okay. Yeah, maybe you can work on creating, um, creating the outline, talking together. Trying and making decisions and completing the outline together as you decide what you want to talk about and how you want to tie it all together. And for example, did you, um, tomorrow we're going to upload the video in which we are going to talk about the celebrity holiday solution and we have to add the receipt of it or the Okay, I'm not sure if I understand your question. Um, the the uh, we're going to have class time tomorrow after our speaking activity to work on our performance task. I'm giving everyone until Saturday to complete this task. If you need another day, oh. but the one way to create the video is simply to record a meeting. Right, we're in a meeting right now. You can record this meeting. And you can practice beforehand presenting, sharing your screen, right? So that you have some visuals, knowing what you're going to say, and, and so on. That's one way to do it. You know, there, uh, other uh, students are using different apps, different software to, to create their video. But, you know, you can create the video as you've created many videos already uh, in this class just by recording these online sessions. Okay. It's up to you. You uh, guys decide how you want to do it. Okay, I, I get you. But the other one thing is um, we have to cook the recycle food or not. It's up to you if you want to actually show yourself cooking and preparing uh, the dishes. Um, you're going to have, you know, either you can either create images and take pictures. You can have a, a, a video and do what's called a B-roll. A B-roll is would be like you create a video and it's a video within a video, right? So... You could show yourself with no audio preparing certain aspects of the food and you could talk about it, right? That's one that's that's one way you could do it. Or you could record yourself preparing, right, the the dish. But this depends a lot on your team members and how you're going to present all of your ideas, right? So the 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 whole point of these online sessions today is to decide how you want to do it but you know there's you can do it all either way you want um, it's just a matter of uh, deciding as a team how you want to present your ideas yes for example uh, I'm going to talk about this and I want to get like and start explaining what is a celebrity and what is not a celebrity uh, of being a celebrity. Right, the the advantages you want to talk about the advantages of being a the celebrity? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of being a celebrity. Yeah, I mean Yeah, so so yeah, that that's that's fine. I mean here here's the thing. I I can't tell you yeah, you should talk about that. It's really about your team members. Yeah, what? Because 
everything should be related. Like you should be talking about culture and food and fashion or, or whatever topics that you're, you're, you're working on, right? They should all tie together. And this is where I think it's easier for me to help you guys if you can complete the outline and then we can talk more specifically, right, about these aspects that you're talking about. So if you're asking me, can I talk about this? Can I talk about this? Well, my answer is, yeah, you can talk about anything you want within those those concepts, you know, fashion, you know, recipes, right? That those It has to be within those categories. But you guys decide as a team the specifics, right, of – what you want to talk about. And again, I think if you present it in an outline, then I can come in and I can say, okay, I like this idea. Uh, why are you talking about this before this? How does this relate to this? I see, right? We, I can, we can have those conversations. Yeah. And Tanya, I don't know, are you using a, a computer or a cell phone right now? Computer. Okay. Have you tried uh, with the phone? Is the audio any better if you use a cell phone? Is that an option? Um, Because I'm having a hard uh, time hearing you. I don't know about uh, Maria de de Cruz. uh, See, Jackie? uh, I'm working to computers. I don't like the other problem. Right. so, So just decide, guys. Maybe experiment with if you can if you have a, a cell phone and the audio is better you know use a cell phone right so the main <laughs> you know the the main thing is so we can hear you i just want to make sure that we can understand you when you're presenting and if you're going to use this platform right otherwise you might decide to create a video uh, on your phone and then use different software to create one video you know what I mean? Yes. But, um, yeah, just uh, experiment. Teacher. Yes. Can I, I create the video in this platform or not? Sure. Absolutely. Yes. You can um, create You can create it here and uh, by recording a meeting, just like what we're doing now. You guys have an option to record. In fact, you're recording right now, right? So... So what you can do is right now you're practicing, you're discussing, right? It's a meeting. But when Mm -hmm. you're ready and you're prepared, right? And I would practice as a team. I would practice going through your presentation several times until you're all comfortable. When you're ready, then hit record again, right? Or stop it and then start it again to create another file and present your your presentation, your, your video, your cooking show. And then you can use that as your as your video. Yes. Okay. And okay. only uh, one video or c- cooking show is other video. Cooking no, just show? just one one video. All right. That's going to be a cooking show. That's also going to include fashion and culture. Right. It's going to include everything. It should include everything. Now, it should be one video that includes everything, but you could have videos within videos. Do you know what I mean? You know, you could have some videos and piece it together if you want to use different software to, to, to edit the videos together. It, it really yeah. depends on how you want to present your cooking show. Right. So, so let, let me give you an example. The, let's say that internet or let's say that uh, it's hard to understand what you're saying, right? And, and you're having problems being understood because of either the broadband connection or, or whatever. Then you could individually create your videos on your phone, for example, and, and then piece it together with other software. Right, I think that's harder because it's it's not quite the same, right? To to create a really good video, but if that's your only option and you you're having really some issues with um, with technology, 
I'll accept it, right? I mean, for the grade, I'll give you the grade. But I think ideally, I think one of the best ways and the easiest ways to do it is just like you're doing now, record a meeting and use that meeting as your performance, as your cooking show. So, you know, like I said, you would create it and share your screens, share images, right? Even share maybe clips of your of yourself, right? Speaking, that would be nice if you can, if the technology permits, permits you to do so. Okay, so, so just experiment and talk about it and try to make a decision. And then if you have some other questions, we can talk about it. Or if you, you know, if you're not sure, if you need some other alternatives or if you're looking for software we can we can discuss that all right any other questions okay again so it is optional if we want to make the receipts or we want show pictures that's that's correct. You you should be you should talk about a, a recipe, but you don't have to show yourself making the recipe. It can be pictures, of, you know, sh showing how to make the, the the recipe, and you probably want maybe an image of what the finished dish looks like when it's finished, when you've completed making whatever you are, uh, whatever you're making. You have a good picture of it. Yes, but you do not have to uh, show yourself making the recipe if you don't uh, if you don't want to. I I think it okay. would be I think it would be nice. You know, I'm thinking like for example, if one of you is in your kitchen and you're making your recipe, and and your other the other your the other teammates are one of them, one of you is talking about culture. Right, and you've got you do share some screens about culture. Someone else is talking about a famous person. You show a couple of pictures, and you talk about that, and you go back and forth between the the recipe, talking about the recipe, and talking about the famous person, and going back to the recipe, and then maybe talk about some cultural aspect, and it turns into like a conversation, right? That's that's kind of what I was thinking. Like that would be kind of nice to see a cooking show kind of like that because that's those are the, for me those are the interesting ones where it's more conversational and this is where you guys don't have to write out everything you're going to say don't write out anything just be prepared to talk about your your topic your concepts and then make it conversational talking to each other about you know your 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 thing right okay Okay, any other questions? No, no, cheers, cheers. No, teacher. All right, guys, I'll go ahead and leave then if you guys have any other questions. Uh, probably the easiest is just send me a chat. I'm checking constantly. Send me a chat that you want me to pop in again uh, if you, uh, to answer any questions. Yes. All right, okay. guys. Thanks. Thank you, Bye. Okay, thank you. Bye. <clears throat> En la hora de reading, ay, here's the teacher. Hello. <laughs> Hello, teacher. We, we, we thought that, <laughs> that you you wouldn't come. Uh. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I was talking with uh, team, I forget now, team four, I think. <laughs> All right, What's how's it going? Any questions? I'm think good. Uh, Let me open up your um, outline. Have you completed your outline? Yes. Sure. All right. So, all right, I'm opening up the file called outline, right? That's Is that what yes. you're using? Okay. So it looks like you have holidays, food, and celebrity. So... Um, let's see, probably, let's see, 
All right. So what I would suggest doing, and, and again, I think if we can expand your outline just a little bit, you can use this outline uh, to better prepare for what you want to say. And that's how I would like for you guys to treat this outline. It's like a, a guide for what you want to say. So here we have holidays and traditions. So you don't need a heading. I don't think you need a heading for uh, that's called holidays and traditions. You can state the holiday that you're going to talk about. So, for example, which holiday uh, are you choosing? Independence Day. Okay. So I would put Independence Day as, as the heading instead of holidays and traditions. So Independence Day. Now, under Independence Day, uh, I'm thinking of the question words. There's many ways that you can talk about this. But maybe you talk about what it is, maybe when, or maybe how, or maybe why. Right? But think about subcategories. How do you want to present uh, this holiday in your in your cooking show? And use the outline to help organize your ideas. And try, as the example that I showed with you guys this morning, try to be as specific as possible, right? Ha try to have subtopics and subtopics and subtopics, and that's going to help you really organize and see what specific key concepts that you want to talk about without having to write out a script, right? We don't want to try, we want to try not to write out a script, but we can use the outline to really provide the detail if it's done correctly. So that's what I would suggest there. With the food, all right, what's the dish that you're going to complete? Chiles and nougat. I'm sorry? Chiles and nougat. Okay. So maybe you just write the name of the dish as the first heading. That's the dish. Okay. And now then you can talk about, you can create a, an outline about, and you have it here, what it is, the origin and the recipe, right? So that, that look, that's fine. Um, but I, I think I would write the actual dish right there in in your outline, so it's very specific to what you guys are going to say. Same way with um, the celebrity, I would put um, Juan Gabriel as the main heading. Okay. okay. All right, and then think about okay, what aspects of his life, and then when you complete your outline, find ways to connect the concepts because maybe this outline isn't representative of the organization of how you're going to present you can decide that later in fact you could even use numbers right you could say number one number two number three around the specific aspects of your outline to represent the order right whatever works for you guys but try to use this outline as a team guide as to specifically what you're going to talk about and then the order in which you're going to talk about. Okay, so I think you're on the right track. I think you have your specific, like based on what you're telling me, right? But I would add even more specifics to the outline. And with the origin, you know, you can write down... Um, you know where he's from but maybe there's some cultural aspect from his origin right that you could list in the outline that you could mention again keywords yeah. really nothing no no long sentences it's just keywords and phrases that but but more specific right because we don't want to miss any specific uh, items yeah. right and this is just going to be yeah. kind of a reminder for us to say, oh, don't forget to talk about, you know, some cultural aspect as to the origin of this food or, and so on. And maybe that okay. links to uh, where Juan Gabriel is from, right? And, and if, you, okay. if you include that in the outline, then you'll see relationships. You'll start to see things in your outline, ideas and concepts that really link to each other. And I think this will help 
you guys make make it more conversational if you keep going back to your outline as you're doing your cooking show right it's just going to help you cover all the things that you want to cover right in your presentation okay. does that make sense yeah okay any other uh questions yeah, maybe we, we, yeah uh yeah i was thinking uh, on add some some numbers uh, in order for us to uh to have like a guide mm -hmm. and because we 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 are going to talk talk like like those programs that that you that you mentioned that they are they are talking and they are like three friends talking about uh, Juan Gabriel and yeah and Chile and yeah yeah think of it like i'm imagining you guys just getting together at one of your houses and just talking about something you're cooking in the kitchen right and you're just talking about different aspects of what you know of these concepts and these people, right? So, you know, maybe you have to do a little bit of research or maybe you already know all of this information. Either way, put it in the outline, right? Even if you think, oh, I know all of these details, just put briefly and organize your ideas, right? And keep those keywords in there just as a reminder so that you don't forget at the moment that you're presenting. Okay. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> Sounds good, guys. All right. If you guys have any other questions, oh. uh, let me know. Okay. I, I, also, okay. um, yeah. I also was thinking uh, on modify a little bit uh, about the um, the independence. Uh, like um, I, I was thinking on on modify this this aspect a little bit because um i want or we want to talk like more about the food uh, but related to to the independence uh like for example we found that uh that that food was actually important i don't know why but but it was actually important for the independence and maybe uh we are we are not going to talk much about the antecedents or something like this yeah uh, that's and that's that? yeah exactly that's my yeah. point we can't talk about every aspect of a holiday or every aspect of a person's life so you're exactly right that is what i, I want you guys to do i want you to find the connections between in this case the holiday the person and the food and you stress and focus specifically as much as possible on those connections, understanding that there's tons, there's a lot of information that you're not going to talk about. I'm not looking for deep information about everything. I'm talking, I, I would rather you speak less about less things, less information, but more deeply about it and making those connections between, in this case, food right a person a holiday culture you know trying to make those connections so ex i you're on the right track uh, adan that's that's exactly the point of uh, this exercise is to make those connections okay i don't know if the girls uh, have uh, another question okay nancy I, I, or uh, uh, susie do you guys have any other questions me not teacher Thank you. All right. Sounds good, guys. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon here. Thank you, teacher. All right. Bye-bye. Hello, Team 12. How are things going? Hi, teacher. Hi, teacher. I'm opening up your outline here. Uh, do you have any questions before I make any comments or?
All right, so let me take a look here at your outline. It looks like you have an introduction, and then, let's see, introducing the celebrity, and then the dish, and then introduction to the holiday. All right. I think the, my first uh, observation would be to probably limit the use of the word introducing. So... In the introduction, um, this morning I, I showed an example, I, I discussed an example of how you can think about an introduction for this type of presentation, a cooking show. And I think one of the best ways to introduce a cooking show is to introduce the overall key theme that, and, and the purpose of why you're presenting this cooking show. So think again specifically about the target audience. Who's going to benefit the most uh, having watched your cooking show? So maybe create a purpose. Maybe it's to inform or to share some cultural aspect. But try to, try to choose a common theme that's going to go through your entire cooking show. It could be the recipe itself. It could be uh, the famous person. It could be uh, Salma Hayek, right? And you're going to talk about culture, her cultural uh, history. What she, maybe this dish is something that she likes, right? But in the introduction, you can talk about maybe provide background information, general information about Salma Hayek. I don't think we need much of an introduction. Okay, I, I don't find it that that important, but if you're starting a uh, cooking show, you're probably going to say one thing or one purpose that later you'll speak more specifically in terms of the dish or the recipe and the celebrity herself and a holiday or cultural aspect, right? And so... In this case, we have, um, you know, I, I don't know, I don't think we need introducing the celebrity point number two, or I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the difference between uh, that and point four and point five, a link between Alma and the dish. Hmm... Preparation of the dish. All right. So, all right, let, let's look at Salma Hayek first. So we're going to talk about her career and her lifestyle. If we're going to talk about her career and her lifestyle, my question to you, all of you, is what connection to her career and what connection to her lifestyle relates to the dish, relates to the holiday? Right, so remember that you know it's going to be impossible to talk about everything related to Salma Hayek, or it's going to be impossible to talk about every aspect of Independence Day. We're, we need to be very selective, very specific, and only talk about certain aspects of each as they relate to each other. Does that make sense? Like we've got a dish, we've got a holiday, and we have Salma Hayek. So how do we connect those? And we don't want to talk about aspects of Salma Hayek that really don't relate a lot to Independence Day or it doesn't relate a lot to the dish. I mean, it's okay to talk a little bit, right, and provide a little bit of extra information, but the main thing is to connect as much as possible the, in this case, the celebrity the dish, and the holiday. Now, the there's another aspect, the cultural aspect, right? That, um, you know, maybe the cultural aspect is the overall theme and purpose of all of this, right? Maybe there's some cultural aspects of uh, Salma's lifestyle, and maybe you just talk about her lifestyle. And maybe there, within her lifestyle, there's a lot of cultural richness that you can talk about that relates perhaps to 
the Independence Day, the holiday, and and the dish. Okay, so um, what I would try to do is to use the outline as as a guide. We want to try to be as specific as possible. So as in the example that I shared with you this morning, like let me just take lifestyle for example, you're going to want to have some subcategories, right? So a lifestyle, you know, I don't know, maybe I don't know what categories that you're you're considering for lifestyle, but maybe you can break it down into aspect one, aspect two, like categories, like subcategories. This is really the the exercise in doing an, a good outline is how many subcategories, and, and even and try to go as specific as possible, right? Your goal is to try to be as specific as possible with keywords. So that when you prepare your cooking show, you're actually going to create your your cooking show. You use this as a guide to remind yourself what are those specific aspects. And when you do this across your outline, right? Let's look at traditional dress. Okay, traditional dress for Independence Day. Um. All right, so traditional dress. Let's say. Um, you know, I, I'm just making up categories here. So, and you can decide later how to do this. So dresses, maybe hats, shoes, or as, as just as an example. Maybe down here below, lifestyle, you have some mention of clothes. Right? Maybe this is a category. Oh, here, I'll just do it here. And again, maybe this is not the best example, but... The idea here is like maybe you're going to mention something about her clothes or fashion because fashion also is one of our categories. And so she she is, uh, you know, maybe she has something about clothes and you have dress here, dresses or, or formal and informal, formal, informal, right? But anyway, what I'm trying to show here is here clothes, maybe something formal or informal that is related here in this discussion is going to relate to something that's mentioned here. See that? And so here with within your outline, you can make that connection. You can see that relationship. And maybe they're not exactly the same, right? And maybe they're different. You know, maybe her clothes are are less related, even though she's from Mexico, maybe she's has a different style that's different than Independence Day. That's fine too. You can compare and contrast these these different aspects. But you're comparing and contrasting in this case traditional dress that's representative of a holiday, a Mexican holiday. Salma Hayek, who's Mexican, is either going to do uh, you know be part of that culture or she's not. And you can mention that. All right. So I don't mean that everything has to be the same, right? I, but you're, you're finding points of comparison. You're finding points of comparison. And in your outline, if you, if you are more specific and talk about less things, then it's going to be easier for you to make or find those points of comparison. All right, so um, same way with this tequila. And uh, so maybe tequila is part of the Independence Day, and then maybe tequila here is part of the dish, right? So that's good, right? But maybe you can be uh, like in a preparation of the dish. Here, what I would say in the outline is what's the, the dish? The dish is tequila chicken soup. I would put tequila chicken soup here in your outline. This is your dish. Now, what aspects of of uh, tequila chicken soup do you want to include? Keep create some subcategories that relate to the dish. Part of it might be preparation. Part of it might be ingredients. Part of it might be uh, even a cultural aspect that maybe links to other parts of your outline. Right, as as an example. 
So I think in general, less on the introduction, more on the specifics, trying to expand your outline as much as possible. All right. Again, we're, we're being more specific as we create more subcategories within our outline. And again, in general, it's better to speak about less things, but more deeply, more specifically about less information. All right, does this make sense, guys? Or do you have any other questions or comments? Um, no, I think it's clear. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think you're on the right track. And I can see that, I, I see that, you know, as, as I get into it, that you have some... Uh, good information here, but I want this outline to be super easy to use. I want it to be really specific so that, again, it serves as a guide. When you finish your outline, then you could go back and even number. You could follow a numbering system or a letter system like A, B, C, D, or 1, 2, 3, 4 to find a way to organize like what would come first. Like what do you want to present first? You know, or maybe you have comments in the document to help prompt you how you're going to organize all of these ideas. Right now, it, it's just a, a list of ideas, but maybe, you know, I don't know if you're going to talk about the holiday first and then Salma Hayek. Um, but think about, you know, one of these items you could talk about throughout the entire cooking show. For example, the dish itself. You could talk about the dish and present over time, over the 15 minutes or so, the, the recipe, and then kind of sprinkle in comments about the holiday or Salma Hayek. Um, think about it like if you, the three of you were in your kitchen, you were making a dish, and you were talking about this celebrity, and you were talking about Independence Day, and you're basically just having a conversation about these three items. This is what we want to try to create in this cooking show. And again, we want to create a good outline to help prompt us and help remind us to talk about really specific, interesting aspects of, um, of each of these items. Even if you think that you already know, this is not about... You know, um, you know, if you think, oh, I already, I'm going to talk about this, and I'm going to talk about all these specific aspects, we'll include that in this uh, outline. So again, you're less likely to forget it when you're uh, creating your your cooking show. All right, guys. Any? Um, there are no more questions. I guess I'll leave you with it. We're almost finished uh, with the class. We'll we'll come back about uh, in about eight minutes, and. Um, We'll close the class, okay? Okay, teacher, thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, teacher, thank you. Hello, guys. Hi, teacher. Um, Hi, teacher. Yeah, Hi, I was teacher. with another team here, so I'll try to go through here and leave you some comments. Um, did you guys have any questions before I look at your outline? Um, no, did you? All right, so I'm looking at your introduction and again, I would uh, think of the introduction more in terms of the purpose, right? So if you wanna write down a few notes or just a, a f not notes, but maybe keywords about the overall purpose uh, as it relates to your target audience, I think I would just include that in the introduction. Don't spend a lot of time introducing the topics that you're going to talk about later. In fact, I wouldn't mention, you know, if you're going to talk about, uh, let's say, uh, a famous person, and you know you're going to talk about that famous person's favorite dish, some cultural aspects that are related to both, and maybe a holiday Right? Maybe you just introduce the purpose of this is to get to know more about this person. Right? And, and, and that's basically what you would include in the introduction. 
So again, not much about the introduction. Get right into uh, the recipe or get into the discussion. Uh, in your case, talking about um, the uh, death's day or day of the dead. Um, for, let's see, so I'm looking here, day of the celebration. All right, so what I would recommend in, instead of questions... Instead of posing questions, I would include keywords or phrases that represent the answers to those questions. That makes sense, right? So instead of asking a question, when do we celebrate the holiday? I mean, you know, maybe that, um, you know, that's a, a, a specific aspect that it's just a, a fact. You could just have one, you know, uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about that unless you want to talk about why. Why do you celebrate that holiday? How do you celebrate those holidays? So I would focus more on the how and the why. Of course, you can mention when you celebrate it, but it may not require a whole subsection, right? Because, and I'm looking, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add something here to your, all right, so I'm looking here at your outline here, and I would use, I would first of all be a little bit more consistent with uh, your your outline, all right? And when I mean by consistency, using the same bullet points, just following Microsoft Word's either numbering system or bullet points to be consistent throughout, right? I It's okay to use colors, but I, I noticed that there are different bullet points, and it looks like there are like dots along the left-hand side that I'm not sure what that represents. Um, but so so let's look under the famous person. So the famous person. All right, uh, who is he? So instead of posing the question "Who is he?", maybe you write out. Three things that that he is labeled, right? Let's let's assume that maybe he uh, was considered three different types of people based on what he accomplished. You could list you could list those three things, right? You would list it in your outline, right? So I think I would generally get away from the questions because the outline. What I want it to do for you guys is to provide a guide for you to follow when you're presenting your cooking show. And the key to a good outline is being specific, having a lot of subcategories and many subcategories of other subcategories of other subcategories. That is going to be a good outline because it's going to provide detail. And that's really the purpose of creating this outline for this, for this activity is to help you guys think more specifically about very specific aspects of things that you want to talk about. Think of, you know, what are some of the main key aspects that you want to talk about and some of the interesting key facts and present that in an organized way in your outline. And again, shifting from questions to really providing those answers, providing the detail that you want to talk about because you don't want to be thinking you know, uh, at the moment that you're presenting your, uh, your cooking show, you're looking at your outline, right? Or you're preparing for your outline and you're having to try to answer all of these questions. You want the, the answers in there so that you are more familiar with how you want to communicate those answers. Okay. I just think it would be easier for you to think of your outline in that sense. Okay. So I would try, uh, to, uh, be more consistent in the bullet points and try to offer more uh, more detail, a little bit more detailed. Um, you know, I, I'm looking here at popular things that you can find and buy. Um, so let's see, culture, day of the den, meaning. Yeah, so... You, you have some good level of detail here, right? I, I, you've got some good information. It's just a matter of organizing it in a way that you're, uh, that is going to be uh, helpful. And 
Yeah. So does that does that uh, make sense, guys? Or do you have any other uh, questions, specific questions? No, teacher. No? All right. Uh, let me, I think no, we'll uh, stop there. I want to get uh, back into the main class so that we can close the class. If you guys have any questions or want to meet after class or if you uh, are working on this outside of class, uh, just let me know or send me a message in the chat if you want me to look at something outside of class, and I'll certainly do that. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all right, guys. It is 940, 941 actually, and I want to go ahead and close the class. Today we worked in our teams, in our groups, in Microsoft Teams, uh, continuing to develop a good detailed outline. Um, I want to stress the importance of when we break out into groups and when I'm giving you guys time in class to work together in your teams, I want to express the importance of you guys recording, first of all, working in Microsoft Teams and recording your sessions as, as informal as they are. Um, it's important for you, I think, to have evidence on what you're doing. If I'm asking for you to develop an outline, a Word document in Microsoft Teams, I would ask that you do that, not because I don't want you to work in other areas, but I want to have evidence. I want you to be able to see, show me at any time your participation. And the easiest way for me to be able to, for you to show evidence that I can see what you're doing is to record your sessions, to keep all of the documents within Microsoft Teams. That just allows me to see that you're contributing, that you're making an effort. And for me, that's, that's the main thing is that you're trying, you're making an effort, and that I can see the evidence of it. I need evidence. Otherwise, if you're telling me, I, well, I worked over here, we did this and this and this, but I can't, I, there's no way to, to verify that, right? Then, you know, that's, that's not uh, how I would like to work. I would be able, I like to know that you're making an effort. And so please make sure that you're working in Microsoft Teams when instructed and these documents that you're creating, that you're, um, you're putting them in the appropriate files so that I can provide you better feedback. One of the key aspects for today, guys, is developing specific ideas and the outline. In order to create an outline with specific ideas, we need to create subcategories of subcategories of subcategories. And so make sure that you're using Microsoft Word, the bullet points or the numbering system, and just use that to be consistent through each of your topics and be specific, right? Make sure that you're not asking questions in your uh, outline, that you're answering the questions by providing short key words and phrases in an organized way so that when you're preparing and even when you're presenting your cooking show, you can easily glance down at your outline and that's going to help you to remind you to talk about certain key aspects of what it is you're talking about. Try to think of the outline as a guide to help you do a better performance when it comes time to doing your final recording. Tomorrow in class, tomorrow we're going to start right at 8. Please be a few minutes early because I want to start right at 8 so that we can finish and give you the rest of class to continue working on this performance task. Continue working together with your teammates. And on Friday, if your team is ready, go ahead and record in class. I'm going to give everyone until Saturday to complete this task if you need more time to do the final recording. I really encourage you to try to practice giving at least once practice going through the cooking show without rec you can record it if you want but just do it a couple of times at least so that you can choose which performance right is going to be best right that you think you you did the best on make sure that you try to include 
links or connections between the different aspects of the topics. And we can talk about that again tomorrow. And um, I'm going to try uh, tomorrow also to meet with those teams that I have not had a chance to meet with today. So I would ask that if, if I met with your team today, uh, I would ask um, to give me a chance to work with the other teams first. Of course, if any team wants me to meet with me outside of class, of course, I'm open to do that. Just send me a message and let me know what time. Um, but I want to meet with everyone before you do your recording. I want to meet with each team to go over your outline before you record. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're planning and working uh, together with your team. If anyone is having issues or if someone's not participating, I need to know. Um, and um, I need to know if someone's not uh, doing their part or if it's interfering with you trying to complete the task. Okay, so if you guys are facing any challenges, I need to know about them. And please don't let me... Don't let don't inform me at the very last minute if it's something that I can try to help intervene and and uh, correct before the the due date for this assignment. Okay. All right, guys. I think we'll stop there. Are there any questions about the performance task in general, or or anything that uh, any questions that you have at this point? No. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there then. And I uh, hope you guys have a good day today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, Thank you teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you.